good morning welcome to book club you're awake are you awake no <laughs> you're not awake uh, <laughs> you're asleep <laughs> all right jessica and you're up today yep Yay, thank you. our dearest and most gracious father in heaven we are very grateful for all that thou hast blessed us with in the form of friends and family, the gospel, and the many ways that we can improve upon our lives. We are grateful for the advantages that Plexus brings into our own health and for the opportunities it brings for us to better ourselves financially and physically that we may better serve thee. And for the opportunity it gives us to learn how to care for, understand, and connect with other people that we may be more Christ-like and that we may help others to feel good. We pray for thy spirit to be with us today, that we may grow and learn and study together, and that we may be inspired and guided in the things that we need to accomplish, um, both in life and in our businesses. And we're just grateful. And thank thee so much for it. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. All right, got my timer. Well, okay. We're on, for me, 137. So are you still doing application Fridays or are we just reading? Yeah, application Friday. I forgot. Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care what you want to do. I'm just curious. I'm like, we've only done it once, so I forgot. <laughs> I love it. Okay, I'll set the timer and we'll just chat about it. So, what do we have to say about this? We want to be admitting our wrongness quickly and emphatically. Using a drop of honey. I think one thing that I've learned in this business is like, as a leader, mm -hmm. when you're trying to help, um, sorry, when you're trying to help people learn the business and all this stuff, like, it's interesting because people have their own set ways they already are doing things. And so right. they're incorporating their own ways into the business. And so before it was kind of like, oh, you know, just do this, this, and this, like, just do that, you know? And, and now I'm learning, like, as a leader, like, there's people who don't want to do it. You know, there's people who want to just do exactly what you say. And there's people who really just want to make their own spin on things and, right. and want to just try different things. And, and they're like, trying to argue with them just doesn't help <laughs> right you know and so just like listening for understanding like we've been talking about and um just like let people you know like with our kids like we gotta let them try their own thing yeah like, we gotta own it and sometimes it's so hard because you can see like oh, that's, not gonna work. that's just not gonna work <laughs> for you and sometimes they surprise you because it does work. You know what I mean? Right. And so you just yeah. never like judge or prejudge or try to control. It's totally then, humbling when that happens. Yeah. <sighs> oh wait, I didn't know everything. And so like Oh wait. <laughs> we're wrong. <laughs> and that's honestly where leaders are born is right. like allowing them the freedom to try different things and then trying to guide them and like sharing your story it's that whole like feel felt found method do you know that method um the what feel felt found no it's like it's pretty awesome i love it it's basically like you know someone's telling you and this can be a prospect for business builders or anyone really <laughs> like someone's telling you an excuse for doing something or whatever you could be like oh yeah i can tell like I can see why you feel this way. Um, like I felt that way back when blah, blah, blah. What I found is, 
you know, and it's just like a way of sharing. You all felt found. Yep. It's awesome. But it's just a way to show understanding, to validate yeah. what you said, and then to share how you've like dealt with the same thing. And so I love that. Yeah, that's really cool. So I had an application room yesterday. Ooh, I want to hear. So we have COVID in our house. <laughs> so Cohen has basically been in his room laying around doing nothing for like a week. <laughs> and uh, there's a little bit of frustration and resentment from the other children, you know, because they want to lay around and do nothing too. Right. And, uh, (laughs) so I, I'm not sure if Ethan is sick or not. He woke up yesterday feeling kind of cruddy. And the problem is, is that he's got, he's had these issues before, like with the headache and the stomach ache and, and, uh, that sort of thing. I think it's a food thing. I think if he eats certain amounts of different things and it makes him not feel so good but he doesn't want to hear that but yeah. that's the side point that was not my moment yesterday yeah <laughs> anyway but I could be totally wrong too he could be sick he could have COVID but um mm-hmm. he I prayed about what to do and I allowed him to just kind of relax in the morning and I kind of brought him the things that I wanted him to do and all that well Peyton got so angry like sad and frustrated and felt like she had been dealt with unfairly because she had not felt good the day before and I made her get up and do x y and z and blah 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 and and it was so funny because I was like I I told her I said I'm doing what I feel is right like I did what I felt was right for you. I'm doing what I feel is right for him. And that just did not, she did not care about that. She was like, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I said, well, she goes, I had such a bad stomach ache. And I was like, and I thought if you got up and walked around, you would feel better. She was like, yeah. I said, and did you? And she was like, well, yeah. And I was like, so see, it was the right thing. You know, like I kept like, trying to show her how what I was doing was right and it she just kept feeling sad and frustrated and hurt and you know whatever and one of the trips up and down from from taking care of whatever Ethan needed it just sort of everything kind of you know because of this stuff that we're reading and I came downstairs and I gave her a hug and I said I'm sorry I'm I might have done the wrong thing I I might have needed to let you just lay around for a little while yesterday morning yeah. I'm sorry and she cried for a little longer and you know she gave me a bunch of hugs but there wasn't like contention anymore like we weren't butting heads anymore and and you know I just kept apologizing the next part of me is to you know try to be patient with my children's process because at some point I'm just like okay can we be done with this now and move on you know so I started feeling that but I did I kept it to myself you know I just hugged her and I was like okay I'm just gonna I don't want to do this right now but I'll let her do her thing and yeah. but it was just sort of like no oh. <laughs> I I don't feel like what I did was wrong but it could have been wrong it could have been the totally wrong thing to do. Yeah. And I don't want my daughter to feel like I care more about her brother than her. So it's like, well, I don't. I love you too. And yeah. I made the wrong thing and I'm sorry. I love that. I totally had a moment like that with Clara too yesterday. <laughs> oh, yeah? So I came up with these new like lists for each room. Like instead of having a job like okay, you're sweeping the whole house. You're, you know, like, we're just, right. each person does a room, like a whole Yes. Room, and there's like a checklist that I made. Mm-hmm. For and it's pretty detailed. Mm-hmm. Because my house has just been a mess. I'm like, we've got to fix this. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, it's got like dusting, everything, like baseboards, everything. So, and it's pretty, wow. you know, like every day it's different. But yeah. anyways, so Claire is seven, right? So obviously 
the lists are going to be a little much for her. But I was like, but right. she, she can do hard things, right? And so um, she picked, I let her pick like the school room. That's what she picked. And um, and she was on the hardest time of it because there's always so much stuff to put away, but whatever. And so it was taking her like two hours. Mm-hmm. She was just like whining and just, you know. And so, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. And so she's like, I just, I want to do the dining room instead. And I was like, okay, well, why don't, let's do the school room today. And then tomorrow you can do the dining room, but you have to stick with that one all month, you know. Right. And that one's not any easier. Like there's hard things in that one too. Right. So yesterday she did the dining room for the first time, and of course it's really hard. And she did the exact mm-hmm. same thing, and I was just like getting frustrated. Right. <laughs> just like, right. You just get up and do it. It would be done in like half an hour. Just get it done, you know. Right. And <laughs> and she was just like fighting me and screaming, and then I was like, and then I just stopped. I'm like, okay, it's kind of thing. I should stop arguing. <laughs> So, yeah right so i was like you know what clara like it's hard right it's so hard like it's such a big hard job and um like, i'm here to help you you know and she like immediately softened and just like you know and we hugged and then we were being silly and and i was like isn't that fu- so funny how like if i'm cranky like you get cranky and like we both like feed off each other's feelings and you know it was just Funny yeah moment so she's so like i don't know if she's like empathic or what but she totally is like exactly if my feelings like she just like feeds off of them she's a great mirrorer yeah <laughs> <laughs> but our house has never been cleaner so i'm so happy <laughs> oh my gosh the 10 minutes go by so fast when we're just talking I know, right? So fast. <laughs> well, hopefully y'all got some good nuggets with what we were saying, because, I mean, being a parent. We just talked. I don't know. I hope there's something in there that's worthwhile. <laughs> it, was so. good for, it was good for me. For me, you know. Yeah, it was application. We're probably going to have more of that today. Our kids whining and us wanting to argue with them again. <laughs> There was one other theme that came to my mind, if that's okay, real fast. So back when we were reading about Benjamin Franklin and he made a rule to like never be, have a direct contradiction, um, he said like, I even, you know, forbade myself to use any word or expression in the language that imported a fixed opinion, like certainly, undoubtedly, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And instead adopted, I conceive, I apprehend, or I imagine, or it so appears to me at present. I was like, I think I'm going to try to slow down and see what words I use that convey, or what phrases I use that convey, you know, this direct contradiction mm-hmm. and start writing them down, you know, so that I can come up with alternatives yeah. and then try to like do that. Like softer so. words. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff that's more open and inviting. Yeah. I don't know if I have any. I'm not sure. I'm not aware. <laughs> yeah. But I do feel like I directly contradict people often. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> we'll see. I know. Part of me is like, I like to look at the other side of things just because, you know, just like <coughs> as a way of just. <coughs> making people see other sides of things you know even if i totally agree with what they're saying i'll be like like, yeah but what if you know my husband like hates it he's he's gotten used to it over the years but like um i always play devil's advocate like if we're in the car and he's like having a hard time like with someone being a jerk driving i'll be like but maybe they're in the hospital like having or on the way to their house to the hospital having a baby or something you know like I do I that too. <laughs> in the car. I don't know if I do that a lot like other places, but I totally do that in the car. Yeah. And I don't know. Seth hates it. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, it feels like a way to cope, like to help me realize 
you know, to diffuse the situation, but for him, it's like not helpful. <laughs> it's not. He goes, you know what? They don't need to make, they don't need you making excuses for that. <laughs> he says to me, I'm like, I'm not making excuses. I'm just making this happier for me. <laughs> exactly. I know, but to them, it feels argumentative, right? So it's like, it's true. Like, it's true. Like, we're twins. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Thanks for a good discussion, Jeff. <laughs> we'll get back to reading on Monday. Yep. Bye, everybody.